and welcome to URM's GDPR seminar, Back to Basics. My name is Lisa Dargan, I'm a director at URM, and I'm joined by Stuart Skelly, one of our senior consultants. What we want to do today is step back and, get, and look at what are the fundamental principles of the GDPR? What is it and what is it intended to do? How do I get started? So knowing what those principles are, how do I get started in ensuring my organisation is compliant? What are the top 10 tips for achieving GDPR compliance? And alongside that, what are the big five data protection policies that I need to have? Now, the purpose of today is very much we are going back to basics. We are talking about what it is, why it came about, and what it intends to do, and how to comply with GDPR. But there is something you need to be mindful of, which is a new regime for sending personal data out of the UK lawfully and there's some things we need to do so we will touch on that as well so that you get an understanding of what that is so for those of you that aren't familiar with urm let me just tell you a little bit, bit about urm and our credentials we have been uh, established since 2005 we've got over 15 years data protection experience um our team we've got a team of data protection consultants and they are certainly since the uh, advent of the gdpr and prior to that have spent a lot of time doing gap analysis identifying um, where you're compliant and where you need to improve and supporting compliance projects. In actual fact, we're finding at the moment there's a lot more um, GDPR gap analysis we're doing. I think many organisations did a lot of work back in 2018, haven't done so much and are taking the opportunity to step back. And what we have got, and Stuart is one of those, is a passionate team of people who've sat where you sit going, how do I comply? and also helped people comply as consultants. So on that subject of passion, let me introduce you to Stuart. He's been involved with data protection since the year 2000. He's a former solicitor, so when it comes to law and legislation, he knows the ins and outs and dots the I's and crosses the T's. He's a former DPO, and for us at URM now, he's one of our senior consultants and trainers. So Stuart, can we just start off with, before we dive into this, what the some really basic terms are and what things we need to be mindful of. Absolutely, Lisa. So <clears throat> this uh, uh, seminar is titled uh, uh, Back to Basics, and we really are returning to basics here, some uh, of the terms that are used in the GDPR. First of all, personal data, uh, that's like the fuel that the GDPR runs on, and it's information, information that can directly or indirectly identify a living human being. Speaking of living human beings, the, the, uh, the data subject is the person that the personal data relates to. So Stuart, I hear a lot of mention about cookies being personal data. Is that personal data or is that just a myth? Uh, well, the cookie is a piece of software which is planted onto your machine when you visit certain websites, Lisa. So the cookie is the software, but the, the uh, software records a piece of personal data called the IP address or internet protocol address of your computer or laptop, the device that you use to uh, um, access the website. And that has been uh, decided to be a piece of personal data, the IP address of a computer. Okay. So special category personal data, Stuart, what's that? Yeah, uh, you may remember this is uh, being called sensitive personal data under the, uh, the previous legislation, uh, Lisa. It's uh, information which is particularly sensitive and the, the disclosure uh, without the permission of the data subject, the person who it's about, would cause particular harm to that person. So it, it's things like um, uh, health information, their uh, race or ethnicity, their uh, political opinions or religious beliefs, uh, trade union membership, sexual orientation, that, that sort of thing. Okay, and Stuart, just before we press on, Probably, as you're aware, everybody, there's questions, and if questions come up that are relevant to the subject, we'll answer those as we go along. So, is an official mail ID personal data? Uh, um, official mail, uh, so a, a, an email, Someone's email address. Uh, email address. Uh, it can be, uh, uh, for, for example, um, xyz at gmail.com wouldn't be uh, um, personal data, but uh, fred.blogs uh, at yahoo doco.uk is because obviously it contains Fred Bloggs' name. Got it. Uh, even if it's a company address like fred.blogs at uh, abclimited.co.uk, uh, that's still personal data. Okay, 
So processing, Stuart, what, what is processing? Oh, processing, well, it's basically anything you can think of to do with personal data, uh, Lisa. Uh, so that would be collecting it, um, uh, sharing it, sending it, storing it, even deleting uh, personal data counts as processing. It, in fact, it's quite hard to think of something you can do with personal data that doesn't come under the very broad, uh, uh, broadly framed definition of processing in the regulation. Uh, now, a controller, another common term from uh, the GDPR, that's the person or organisation which determines or uh, decides uh, the purposes or means of the processing. So, uh, uh, what the personal data uh, is used for and how it is used. Uh, I often think of that as the deciding organisation or the deciding entity, uh, whereas the processor is the person or organisation which processes personal data on behalf of and under the instructions.